The Chris Abraham Show. It's super windy, guys. I think this is season six, episode 15 of the Chris Abraham Show. Freaking windy. We'll see if, uh, and it's cold now. It was so warm earlier. Wah, wah. I might take advantage of Roger Roundy's ride home because it's uh, getting colder. And I might have to take off my, the hat I have on and put on uh, my knit hat because it's windy maybe after i walk a while it'll get less windy i have about 50 minute walk ahead of me to get to lion hall which is a belgian restaurant i'm completely not dressed for but i dress for walkies and for comfort and i'm wearing like black t-shirt black sweatshirt black shorts uh wearing a crazy pair of like uh I think it's like Florida Gators uh, branded Nike Pegasuses uh, because, you know, at the end of the day, I get my Pegasus size 14s as cheaply as I can. For example, today a pair of Nike Pegasuses arrived from Nike.com and they're, they're uh, model 40s, they're the latest model, but they're branded for uh, England. So they're English soccer slash football brand. England! I guess the national team. And it's like, uh, the color's really pretty. It's, uh, it's sky, the kind of sky blue, uh, um, uh, University of North Carolina Tar Heel Blue, as they call it. So it's lovely. And, uh, I decided that since I was listening and working all day to the most droll podcasts that I couldn't really get into audiobooks because I needed to focus on work. Oh, and I got to see my favorite burst in the entire world, uh, high school senior Claudia, who uh, was uh, studying, she's in her senior year, she just applied to Virginia Tech. Uh, she's dating a boy named Adis, and uh, he's an uh, Ethiopian immigrant, and she's Hapa Haole, which means her, I think her mom is Haole, her mom is like white Caucasian, like white lady, and her dad is, uh, is, uh, is Costa Rican. So I should have told her Pura Vida today, that would have been funny. But she's fluent in Spanish, and uh, anyway, she's a super cool girl. Oh, she noticed that I was shaving, and I said that was because, um, buddy is calling me 75 and I'm only 53 even though Arlington County Parks and Rec thinks I'm 55 plus thanks to the guy at uh I'm not gonna out him the dude who signed me up uh anyway uh lots of stuff about open AI lots of stuff about I wrote my my funniest tweet today I thought was I called the left uh, Schrodinger's woke, which is to say they hold a superposition. Um, the Sh- Schrodinger's cat is in a superposition between being alive and dead based on the vial of poison. And the uh, Schrodinger's woke for the left is the superposition between being uh, anti Israel or anti Palestine or pro Palestine or pro Israel. So who knows? When, it, when the left collapses on itself, whether it'll be pro-Palestine or pro-Israel, um, it's really hard in the world to be perceived as anti-Semitic. So, and, you know, uh, you would think that if you are, I mean, I hate to say this, because I'm a Judeo-Christian kind of guy, but in a world where all of your morals and ethics have to do with freedom of choice and freedom to be queer and trans and non-binary and gay and LGBTQIA plus and two-spirit and have pronouns and be able to choose your gender. Um, in a world like that, I, I feel like 
uh, Palestine is antithetical to that. So who knows? Um, it's never stopped anybody's passion. Like logic has nothing to do with passion, right? So um, we live in a world now where uh, we are very anti-colonial. We're extremely anti-oppressor. We're extremely anti-Howley. Um, and anybody who seems like they are in any type of Harlem or ghetto, be it George Floyd or uh, 5,000 Palestinian babies, the uh, nod is always going to be to the one who is actually verifiably more repressed, suppressed, uh, depressed, compressed, and uh, the only people on planet Earth that can be more oppressed and uh, uh, the Jewish people are whoever the Jewish people are perceived as oppressing. So, uh, so there you go. Um, so it's not about logic. It's about who's the most oppressed and who needs to be stood up for the most. And in 2023, uh, Jewish folks are just perceived as white folks and Jewish folks are just perceived as colonials and colonists and Im imperial and capitalistic. And even if there is a hundred year history, a uh, 200 year history of people of Jewish descent is actually creating, writing up, inventing, and developing the entire concept of, of Marxism, uh, it doesn't matter if people find that you have expensive cars, expensive lives, uh, expensive educations, expensive vacations, expensive clothing. If you have big houses, big families, big cars, if you uh, don't have any debt, if you um, have whatever degree that you want, if you are unencumbered by uh, issues of struggle, if you are, uh, if you have or ever have had a trust fund an inheritance, if you are or ever have been a, uh, an heir, if uh, you uh, have salary jobs, if you're not afraid of retirement, if you can eat wherever you want, whatever you want, um, not including uh, any restrictions that you have for being uh, kosher or being vegan or whatever, but the ability to ha consume whatever you want to choose whatever you want to do, to explore whatever you want to explore, and the freedom. If you have safety nets and so on and so forth, then you are, by definition, not the oppressed, you are the oppressor. So that's happening. So I don't even know uh, the, what the super, superposition will collapse into. Uh, will it collapse into pro-Israel or will it collapse into pro-Palestine? I remember when I was in my teens and early 20s, it was all about South Africa. I never ever heard, I never ever heard anybody, I never heard the voice of the Afrikaners, of the Afrikaans, of the, of the, uh, of the Dutch and German and even Jewish South Africans. And I never heard anything at all in popular culture ever from the farmers, the ranchers, uh, the establishment, white people in government, uh, the Afrikaners, the, uh, I forgot there's other terms for them. I never heard their point of view. All I heard was Nelson Mandela. All I heard was Nelson Mandela. There was no other choice besides freeing Soweto and freeing, uh, the, uh, freeing, what is it? Uh, um, integrating and getting rid of, of the, of the, uh, Oh, they're, they're not called ghettos, but they were called uh, something else. But the entire narrative was dominated by uh, black freedom in, uh, in South Africa. Uh, it was ubiquitous. People all across the entire world were divesting. They were making their, their they were making, uh, they were forcing their universities to divest. They were, uh, um, forcing their companies to divest. They were forcing their unions to divest. Uh, they were forcing their banks to divest. Uh, there was a complete cataclysm of abandonment of any support 
of anything that was happening in South Africa and, you know, Rhodesia, which is Zimbabwe, and all the other uh, colonized countries that had been um, led and ruled and dominated by the uh, colonizers, literally colonizers from uh, Great Britain and Germany and Belgium and Holland and and uh, and Italy and so forth. And this was an extreme. It was an extreme uh, evolution, and it happened quickly. And when the banks bailed, then everything fell apart. And even though the outcome wasn't good for anybody, um, most of the ranches and most of the farms went to seed. Uh, well, there wasn't the kind of handoff that was remotely um, consistent. Uh, there was always a lot of of miscommunication and corruption, and there was a lack of education. There was a lack of training. Uh, there was there was a lot of animus between the uh, oh, Boers, 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 or something. There's a lot of animus between the Boers or the Afrikaans or whatever they were called, the people who speak Dutch, Dutch, Afrikaans, and, uh, and the, the black people from South Africa that, uh, that instead of trying to find a, an amicable way, it, it turned into vi being very violent, lots of killing, lots of death, lots of, uh, lots of those kind of things. So that is probably the fate of Israel, if if uh, if anybody decides to formally divest, and if anybody if anybody starts to abandon starts to abandon uh, Israel, you know, once the rats start leaving, all the rats leave, and uh, once uh, there once the collapse starts to happen, it happens really quick, and uh, Israel will cease to exist in any meaningful way without the complete commitment of uh of great britain and the united states uh there's no other like way that that uh israel can you know pay for uh the iron dome uh there's no way that there can be the kind of continued upkeep of such an expensive and uh small place uh, so it's very important that all energies with regards to the United States and Western Europe and and uh, the northern uh, countries and so forth and countries that have any connection to people who live in Israel, it behooves them to do whatever it takes to discredit, destroy, undermine, uh, kill, wound, destroy careers, ruin people's lives, anything possible in order to kind of continue the movement towards, you know, controlling the narrative in such a way that uh, the West wouldn't dare cut and run the way we are doing with Ukraine. Ukraine has always been uh, a patsy. It's always been uh, a, a useful idiot. So that was probably a foregone conclusion. Like I said, in my other podcasts, uh, Russia was always going to win. Um, I don't know why this happened. I mean, if the West wanted uh, Ukrainian soil for its breadbasket, leaving well enough alone and being friendly across the uh, across the uh, um, the border, and never and having sort of like the what what would have been smart with Ukraine is to have the same sort of relationship of protection with Ukraine that America has with Taiwan. And there's plenty of opportunities to have created a Ukraine that was so prickly. They call it the, um, uh, what do they call it? They call it the spiny. No, they call it the, what the, what the hell is, uh, not anteater, whatever the kind of animal that has all the spines. Uh, that's what they call the strategy, which is you go ahead and you never claim Taiwan as a an officially guarded property of NATO or the EU, 
But you never don't, right? There's nothing formal, but everybody knows. Nobody talks about it, but they always sort of say that Taiwan is a is a uh, an essential relationship, and that if anything were to happen with Taiwan, whoa, don't even don't even make fun of that. It's not even a joke. Uh, so that would have been the smart thing, and that was sort of the thing that happened with Ukraine for 30 years, right? It was the unspoken spoken uh they had as much sovereignty as you would expect from being the hot babe between two uh very ardent uh courtiers between two ardent what are the people who try to claim a beautiful woman in the south so the west the left and the west and the east were fighting for the marriage with her and she was able to keep extremely well autonomous very single uh had a level of sovereignty had uh had that going for 30 years um russia really didn't want a wife but didn't want to give up its privilege with its mistress either and all the all the ladies were like put a ring on it and uh nobody wanted to put a ring on it because like ukraine's body count is so high Jesus, the sluttiest country in all of Europe, man. It's just, it's just corrupt. It's fucked up. All of its elections are about as democratic as America's or Russia's elections. Everybody is on the grift. Everybody's stealing money. All the money that is given by development organizations goes into the pockets of people who have homes in, in London and in, uh, in uh, Geneva and Zurich and Malta. And uh, it was like best you can do with uh, best you can do with uh, Ukraine is to be Ukraine's sugar daddy. And there was plenty of plenty. Like if if Ukraine didn't go ahead and get engaged to the EU or NATO, yeah, fucking John McCain, man, fucking I hate that guy. If uh, if America wasn't so greedy and we're openly greedy and we're hostily greedy. If America weren't so greedy, it could be, it could be a DMZ of its own accord, and it could receive and sell. It could be that rare uh, Switzerland on the east that can gladly do business with uh, Russia and America both, and secondly, uh, could have the support of both countries, can have a de facto protection, uh, can also not have the responsibility. If uh, it ever got, if the West ever got caught in a NATO snag, it would, it wouldn't be drawn in. Uh, America's so greedy, man. Like, so anyway, it's not the same thing with regards to Israel. Uh, You know me, I don't give a fuck about ethnicity. I give zero fucks about ethnicity. I cared about ethnicity, not at all. My fucking parents were like, you're... You know, your dad is Hungarian and Czech and your mom is Irish and English and there's some German in there. And uh, I didn't give a fuck. I grew up in Hawaii. Everybody was so interested in their stupid ethnicity in Hawaii that it just became boring. It was like it was like basically being so proud of having, you know, brown eyes or blue eyes or green eyes. So stupid. So I don't believe ethnic cleansing is a fucking thing. Right? Um, Like, I feel like it's murder. I feel like it's mass murder. I don't fucking think ethnicity is a is a protected anything. Like, I don't like murder. I don't like mass killing. I don't like raising people into the ground. But it shouldn't be more bad if you're a protected species or protected religion or protected class or a protected gender or protected anything. And I say protected species because people, like, you know, they treat certain ethnicities as if they were some sort of bald eagle or some sort of, like, platypus or or ivory-billed woodpecker. I don't care about ancestors. I don't care about ancestral land. I don't care about holy land. I don't care about churches. I don't care about graveyards. I don't care about consecration. I don't care about 
historical this or historical that. I don't care if you have bones of your people in a space. I don't care about any of that stuff. I care about live people and dead people. And uh, you can't fool me into believing that your particular uh, almost extinct brand of ideology, like let, let it fucking it go extinct. If your ideology is so weak that it needs life support, then fucking just stop. So that's not going to be a very popular point of view. Maybe I'm like the ultimate humanist where I think like we're just mammals, man. We're just humans, man. I don't give a fuck about your ethnicity or your race or your gender or your um, sexuality. I care that you're a person and I love that you're a person. And I believe that as a person, you deserve to live uh, the best life you can. But you don't get to live your life uh, by making someone else's life suck more. Uh, so anyway, I'm off to Lion Hall to attend a meetup of my favorite podcasts in the universe. I won't wait. Um, no, no, uh, no, no. Uh, called the No Agenda Show. And uh, we're having a meetup at Lion Hall, and it starts at 5, and I don't know what time it is. It's uh, 4.48 or 1648 as I know it, and I'm finally warming up, so I hate the world a little bit less. And my I got my hands stuck in my pants, which I'm sure is a really attractive thing. Um, I don't know where the fuck I am, but I'm just going to keep on walking till I get there. The map that said the way to get there didn't make a lot of sense. But I know where it is. I just need to find a way there without freezing to death or being hit by a car. So, wait, wait, wait. Uh, I do have my Peregrine, uh, no, my uh, Nike running shoes waiting for me. They were delivered into what's called the concierge locker. Uh, the Nike Pegasus 40s with the English branding. 66 US dollars, brand new. For me, wearing a uh, sports branded shoe, which never sell well, by the way, they always end up almost giving them away because nobody wants to fucking buy them. Um, but I keep my nose in whenever I find them and they're like under 70 bucks delivered, like I'm on it. $66 for a brand new pair of Nike Pegasus 40s, size 14, pretty good. So anyway, I think that this whole game of what proportion of a particular uh, oppressed and very protected um, species of humans, there's actually a competition to see who is more or less of an ethnic cleanser, right? So this is a big thing, right? Is uh, who's ethnic cleansing who more or less uh, effectively in a more or less grotesque way? And who has more or less... Uh, compassion for for which protected limited only how many million left in the entire world people i mean mind you uh palestinians are openly call themselves arabs right so there's plenty of arabs in the world right so you're like i'm an arab oh i got gotcha. you there's plenty of you this is an ethnic cleansing oh no but i'm palestinian oh okay you're you're Palestinian. You're not just Arab or, or uh, another plentiful ethnic group in the region, because that would hurt your competition with uh, the right of uh, Jews to exist in the world, because there's definitely fewer Jews in the entire world than there are people who self-identify as Arabs. So it's going to be a constant struggle as to who wins, who, who is the biggest victim and who is the most decimated, and who has the most dead babies, and who can, who can seem less like the asshole, and who can seem more like the poor little baby, uh, who can become the biggest manifestation of the, of the um, hungry baby with the distended belly and the flies uh, on the eyes, who can, who can manifest the best optics of death and destruction and oppression and 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 murder and uh and 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 who is the biggest beast who's the 
biggest monster who takes advantage of the first world advantages of wealth and oppression and uses first world fifth generation weaponry against a people who are barely evolved since the 1500s. Oh, yeah. Hearts and minds, baby. Hearts and minds, right? Ah, it's a race to the bottom. And yet still, as everybody in college campuses is calling everybody else Nazis and, and uh, being anti-Semitic and calling everybody Nazis back and forth, people still have enough of an appetite to mock and attack Trump for using the word vermin. And, you know, I agree with everybody else that using the word vermin is the least offensive thing that's been said in the, since October 7th. Uh, so that's the beautiful thing. No matter how fucked up the world seems and no matter how many tens of thousands of people are going to die in the next uh, 28 days, um, in the possibility in the last two years of nuclear annihilation, don't forget, uh, Israel is a nuclear state. Don't talk about it, but they are. And... Also, Iran is probably a nuclear state, though nobody wants to talk about that. Uh, it's going to be really interesting to see how this all shakes out and how, no matter how bad this gets, with regards to people in, in uh, Gaza, the West Bank, in Jerusalem, in Tel Aviv, no matter how bad this all gets, uh, no matter how bad October 7th is, or the eleven to 15,000 dead Palestinians who litter the ground, half of which are under 15. Uh, January 6th will still be the worst thing ever to happen in the entire world ever. And Trump, uh, were he to be elected in 2024, would very literally end the world. Like very literally, if Trump becomes president in 2024, uh, all the ice will melt, all the flooding will happen, um, all the, um, all the, uh, what are they called? The, uh, the spin of the earth will catastrophically pole switch. Uh, the, uh, core of the earth will stop rotating. Um, there will be nuclear war. There will be, uh, plagues. There will be frogs from the sky. Uh, Jesus and the Antichrist will fight, uh, doing a dance battle. Um, uh, what else? All the terrible things are bound to happen. So... Don't let him in there, man, because uh, the climate will collapse. Uh, there will be a population collapse. Uh, there will never be another abortion. By the way, the reason why Gaza has so many babies for all the baby killings is because uh, you can be jailed or killed or stoned if you are, like, into abortion or into terminating a pregnancy or doing anything fun like that so and yeah it's probably true that if you have an alternate lifestyle people will because they can't afford helicopters they will push you off buildings and kill you that way so i'm really amazed by this schrodinger's wokeness because uh if if palestine were populated by maga republicans who had the same uh, pro-life stance, uh, it would be bomb, baby, bomb. Uh, so I think it's very funny. I guess uh, it's an amazing time. I mean, I just can't see it. I can't see it. I can't, I, I don't have my heartstrings being pinged by anybody. Like personally, I'm a Zionist. So I know what uh, Israel's capable of and they will stop at nothing. They have a fierce self-righteousness that will never be uh, sated. Uh, they will wait until something else happens. Maybe, I don't know what, October 7th didn't do what they wanted it to. Like it didn't give them enough breathing room to, uh, to exact the kind of vengeance that they probably wanted in that space of time. They didn't realize how quick to the barricades the revolutionaries would be in support of the Palestinians. Uh, so I don't know, like they want to be the winners. If there's a war between who gets that land, uh, Israel has never wanted a two-state solution. Palestine has never wanted a two-state solution. Israel wants 
uh, dominion over the land. And Palestine wants, uh, they want, they want the whole, uh, the whole homeland from the river to the sea. So this is a zero sum game we're playing here. There are nukes. Uh, poor Volodymyr Zelensky, who is a member of the tribe, doesn't know what to do because he doesn't like the fact that his, the homeland of his people are, uh, more interesting to modern American sensibilities than uh, the the land of Hello, my dear. Hello, 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 my dear. It's not the fucking name of the of the region or the famine. Hello, my dear. Anyway, I don't know. So, hi. This is going to be one hell of a fun podcast to listen to, I'm sure. Uh, and I have to take a bio break, even though I'm in the middle of nowhere. So on that note, I'm going to stop the podcast. This was, I think, season six, episode 15 of the Chris Abraham show. And I'll talk to you soon. Love you guys. Bye-bye. Thank you for listening to The Chris Abraham Show. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any future episodes. Until next time.